Welcome back to Bear With Me, presented by Prize Picks. The Boston Bruins finished the 2023-2024 season 47, 20, and 15. My name is Joey Capone. That's Rob Tachi. And the Bruins and the Leafs will face off in round one. What's going on? I'm very excited about that matchup. Very excited. I would have been very fine with the Tampa series. I really would have been. I think that would have been a very, very good series, too. And I still have an eye on the Toronto-Florida game right now. Because if Toronto wins, we do not play Toronto. Uh, and I don't think that's going to happen. As I say this, there's like eight and a half minutes to go. And the Leafs trail by two. So I'm very, again, I'm very excited about the prospect of a Bruins Leafs round one again. I feel so confident. I just said it at the top of the episode. Because yeah. it's just not, yeah, the, the Bruins and the Leafs are playing. That's just what's happening. And we realized, or I realized, I think other folks realized, but it came to my attention through you that that was the case if they lost this game here uh, against the Senators. Now, Senators games, weird. That's always weird. been always. always been the mantra of of this show. Or not the mantra. It'd be insane if that was the only mantra of the show. If we were like, you guys just keep waiting. We don't care about these Leafs games. We don't care about these Panthers games. We just want to get to some some Senators games. But it's a mantra of the of of this show. That's how weird they are. Um, found myself rooting for a loss. I will admit it. I found myself just straight up rooting for a loss. I don't want to say I'm afraid of Tampa, but I certainly prefer watching a, a series against Toronto. I agree. Uh, I didn't know I was rooting against the Bruins that game until Zaka scored that power play goal. And, I, and my everything in me was like, ah, no. Don't do that. Like, Zaka, no, come on. Yeah, guys, of all the times to fix the power play right now. <laughs> I know, right? And the power play looks so good tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good to see. It is good to see. Um, well, they split up Marshy and Pasta. Check that dude, out. How... Speaking of Zaka, how fucking good did Zaka look tonight? He should have had seven goals. I think he only had five shots, but he should have had seven goals. He should have had seven goals. I think he only had five. We'll live with it. Uh, and uh, Pasternak, uh, pay, paying, we're paying that pasta tax in the best way possible. Yeah, I'm talking about I mean, that that giveaway to lead to Ottawa's empty netter. Which you know, like I. I, I yeah. Well, I think it's been funny because like, lately everybody's been jumping down Ty Anderson's throat about how shitty pasta is. And he's like, you guys are all crazy. And it makes me realize how nuanced we are about it. The conversation, because we play both sides. That way we always come out on top. So we right. actively praise and talk shit about David Foster in the same breath. No, I, uh, so I was thinking about it. Cause obviously, you know, I'm seeing that stuff too. And I'm thinking about how I would, really phrase our argument or uh, our i don't want to say ours i don't want to lump you into my thoughts i don't want to speak for you if you agree with me fine but i think i have molded my take a little bit amongst like seeing both sides now that i see where everybody stands it's like okay i think i've formulated how to how to articulate my my whole take on what david posternock is he is without a doubt one of the most skilled uh, naturally gifted players on the planet in my lifetime in a Bruins uniform. There's nobody I want with the puck on their stick in the offensive zone above David Pasternak. I can't think of a single person. I don't think it's really close to act like he is without flaw or to act that like he doesn't come with his own set of uh, um, foibles. foibles. Uh, it's like <laughs> less Yiddish. <laughs> Faults? I don't know. Deficits. There's drawbacks to having him on the ice sometimes. To act like he Same doesn't thing. like have like yeah directly negative impacts on the game in any way is just not true. That's like some rose colored glasses. It's just not true. He does. He does. Would I trade that? No. I I prefer him doing his thing. But uh, it certainly is part of his game. I don't know. He's not infallible by any fucking stretch. To act like he doesn't have terrible giveaways like that one tonight, just like it's not realistic. I don't know. It upsets me a little bit to act like we have to act like he's infallible. Like he's not. He's the best goal scorer I've ever seen on the Bruins. 
He's also a guy who makes me question his hockey IQ often. And that's it. That's the nuance. That's exactly the conversation we have about him. So I, it, it's crazy to me. I, I think you see more people firmly taking the negative than firmly taking the positive. Like, I think you have more people trying to be like, he sucks more than people are like, no, he's perfect. Shut up. Yeah. Um, which I guess makes sense. Like, it's, it's easier to attract haters. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that's weird to me because, like, there are stats and it's like, I don't know. If you're just watching the highlights, you should be really all in on this guy. So, like... I feel like it's almost the guys who are watching 82 who are speaking up saying that stuff, which is usually backwards. Yeah. But I don't know. It's like, it's like Tuca. Like you, if you watched Tuca, you, you never said anything bad about Tuca. It was only if you tuned in for the playoffs or only if you looked at, you know, God, he was good at the playoffs too. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Yeah, you I know we can't, saying. we can't, we got no, too much to talk about. We can't get into too the much. Tuca conversation. Way so too much. Do, All right. Do, what do we want to start with? I have a fun thing that I want to start with. Okay. Let's go for it. Because we have a lot to get to. It's been a little bit. Good to see you guys again. Uh, hey. Things happen. So it's all, it always takes a little bit. But we got Oops. a lot to talk about today, folks. Buckle in. Strap in. Buckle. Strap up. Buckle. Buckle up. Strap in. We did predictions back at the beginning of this here. Hockey season. I want to look back at them. I want to see how close we were on some things. Um, and there are. Um, let me tell you this. I'm, I'm going to. Spoiler alert. These were really fucking good. They were. They we were did I, so good. I okay, so context for the listeners here. Like two weeks ago, I went back and I listened to our prediction episode and I wrote down Joe and I's predictions. And then earlier, like an hour ago, he was like, guess like you try to like tease what you did. And I was like, Oh yeah, like without telling me. And then I was like, Oh yeah, also I wrote down all our predictions. And you're like, shit, that's what my thing was. I like you know I wrote them down when we did it, right? For this episode. Nope. Yeah, I was writing nope. them down as we went. All right. Yeah. So. Well, well but, but I what, that is to say, when I was looking at them, writing it down, I was like, damn. Not only were you and I usually very on top of our predictions, but our predictions were pretty pretty good. Some of them even like almost perfect. Know, some of them were almost perfect. Let me start out with this one. Your record prediction was. 46, 20, and 16. Mine was 48, 21, and 13. I predicted 48 wins. You predicted 46. They finished with 47. Come on. That's unbelievable. You predicted 112 points. I predicted 109. They finished with 114. Even better. That's just it because it, <laughs> nobody predicted they were gonna have 15 overtime losses. Well, you did. Other than me. You predicted 16. I predicted 13. Why did we think they were gonna lose in overtime so much? That's a good point. Why did we think that? That's insane. What did, we know? Insane what did we know? What did we know? What did we know? Hmm. We're just making all this up. We've never had a season's predictions episode. We're just <laughs> <laughs> we're just making this Oops. up as we go. All right. Well, we're gonna start with the with the good ones too. All right. So David Posternock, I predicted 53, 50, 103. Rob, 48, 60, 108. He had 47, 62, 109. Bam. That it is helps. insane. Not, it, it helps when Post is fairly consistent, too. It was very, I mean, he had what, like 61, 62 last year? Which I think we rightfully did not predict him to do again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are both. I mean, your, yours is obviously way closer, but. Those are good. I'm proud of us. Yeah. I mean, we both had him like right around 50 goals, right around 60 assists. That's crazy. It's nuts. Um, one guy we were too high on, both of us. Um, and this was, as we said it, I remember, I mean, you listened more recently than I have. But I remember as we were saying it being like, this is bold, but we're betting on this guy was Jake DeBrusque. Yeah, I, I, I very that one. I just remember, remembered. I remember it saying 30 and 30. That was like, yeah. that's I thought of it all season long. I wanted 30 and 30. And I had him 33 and 40. I had, was even higher on him. You had him yeah. at 60 points. I had him at 73. He finishes the season with 40, 19 and 21. 
Uh, obviously, Jake had a long stretch where he wasn't around. Jake so, Debrusque? No. Jake DeBrusque, yeah. So he actually had this weird thing this season where he went cold for like a long stretch. And then this weird thing happened this year where people talked about trading him a lot. Yeah. Sorry, wait. Am I looking at the right year's notes here? Time is a flat circle. Wait, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is this year. Very weird. Um, One guy we might have been too low on. Trent Frederick. Happily wrong. Happily wrong. Happily wrong. You had him at 15 and 20 for 35 points. I had him 18 and 11 for 29. I don't know why I had him 11 assists. 29 points. He finishes with 40. An 18 and 22 year from Trent Frederick. Uh, and your seventh player award winner. Seventh player award winner. I'm a little surprised I went to him over Heinen. I think it should have really? been Heinen by the end. I feel that Frederick was like really great for the majority of the season. And I think he got very good at the end of it or maybe like fine by the end of it. Not bad by any means. Not like, Oh yeah, he's really got to step it up. But I just feel like throughout the season and especially taking into account that it's like contributing above what you expected. I think Heinen hit that perfectly. Like a guy showed up on a PTO yeah. at his age, having already played in the NHL for that long and was as impactful as he ended up being. There should be another award for that, though. It's like for a what? comeback player of the year kind of thing. I don't know. Like an eighth Isn't player I... award. I don't know. <laughs> you just keep going. Fucking, Nine player. Tenth know. player. Yeah, rank all the guys. That's yeah, why fun. not? There's something insulting about the seventh player award. I don't know. A little bit, right? I, I, spent, I was thinking, like, unless you're a rookie, it's a little mm-hmm. bit insulting. To be like, wow, you were good even though you weren't one of the good players. Like how long Frederick's been in the league for a bit? And he's they're like, wow, you did so much better than we expected. It's like I had 40 points. It's like, well, I know, right? <laughs> good on you, bud. Wow, almost 20 goals. His sixth uh, season. One and guy, he, I can't believe. Sorry, go on. And I just want to point out that he played all 82 games this year. Frederick did. Yes. As did Pasternak, uh, Coyle, and Brad. Crazy. Crazy. The craziest part of all that is that this is Charlie Coyle's sixth time playing 82 games. Third time in a row. That That's is crazy. Stunning. That's stunning. And Brad's Absolutely. first time in like a decade. The last time he played a full season, I think it was like the 12-13 season or 11-12 season. The he- the cr- heavy heavy weighs the crown to be the cat. The There's a rat che- aging like a fine cheese rat. Okay, I'll workshop it. I'll There's come something. Back. Oh, we'll come There's back something. to that. We'll, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think we'll about check it. back in at the end of the show because that's good. You're on to something. And we just mm. got to we got to let it. Pieces are there. The pieces are there. Mm-hmm. I, got the meat. I can't believe we didn't do predictions for Pavel Zaka. Uh, I was thinking that, too. Yeah. I was like, I kept like scrubbing back. We didn't do it for Goyle either. We lost our top yeah. two centers and we didn't predict what the replacements were going to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, I guess expectations were low. The whole thing, you know, leading into the season was that the, you know, the Bruins need a top center and that these guys are not cut out for it and blah, 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 blah. And we just breezed past it and we're like, well, how is uh, Trent Frederick going to carry these guys uh, through the end of the year? Uh, With 40 yeah. points. Yeah, I'll tell and you what. That, I, I'm I'm very confident neither of us would have predicted that Coyle and Saka had the seasons that they did. That's like you I, know what? Yes, I will I will take that away from us <laughs> that we didn't even do it. I will give us credit that we would not have gotten that right. Coyle ending twenty five thirty five sixty, Zaka ending twenty thirty eight fifty eight, combining for the same point total that Krejci and Bergeron had last season. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's fun. That's fun. I like it's, when stuff it's is like, like poetry. That. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, speaking of poetry, we did uh, we did predictions for Milan Lucic and we both overshot it a little bit. <laughs> Why? Did you notice that? We both were pretty high. What <laughs> happened? Who's to say? I don't know. Seems like he didn't play a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Coyle and Zaka had more points than Bergeron and Krejci did. Oh, they oh. three more. Also, it is now five to Florida. So Bruins leaves. I've, I'm so yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Uh, and by and the time you're listening to it, it's over. You, more you importantly, Matthews team. will end the season with 69 goals. I think that's the more important thing. That's the most important part of all of this. Speaking of Matthews, Patra, we did predictions on this little feller here. Remember him? <laughs> you had him at 15, 20, and 35. 
didn't happen he with didn't the caveat longer. if he's if he stayed with the team which he in did a way stay with the team he did stay with the team you should have seen the injury coming you should have known but it's funny because he was with the team like he's been on the ninth floor half the season yeah uh so way to go dumbass you were uh, way closer i had him at 7 10 17 and he was 5 10 15 I nailed it, is what happened. That, and you did say he would not play a full season. So if you just leave it at that, you're right. Because he didn't. There we go. What can't there you we do? go. I nailed it. Um, and the other the other uh, guys that we talked about were uh, the fellows who stand in the net. Omar and Swayman. Now, this was stunning to me. I didn't believe this till I saw it. Um, was that... Swayman played five more games. Is that correct? Five? Is that that's that total is not correct? Four more games. He played more. Mark? I can tell you. I can tell you that much. Played more than Olmark. Um, and also the the season stats are a little deceiving, because, especially because how this season ended. Obviously, Swayman's been uh, sputtering. I guess you could say. Uh, so these numbers that we have here are. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Looking at the season total, it's. It's a little weird, but they both end the year with a 916 save percentage and almost identical goals against too. a 253 for same for Swayman, a 259 for Olmark. Uh, oh man, I nailed Swayman's. You uh, kind of nailed them both. You had a 915 for both of them, a 22 for Olmark, a 26 for Swayman. It, like this is, it's eerie. It's eerie. We're so good it's at eerie. this, dude. We should have a show. And we don't need to look at mine. Mine are, mine are, you don't need to look. Yours are fine. I had, I had Bussy playing a, a lot of games. <laughs> well, I, the thing that we were both wrong about is that we were very, neither of us even doubted for a moment that Omar would get the majority of the starts. The conversation was how many more starts. Right. Um. Yeah. 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 No, yes. no, no. And that wasn't the case. Specific predictions. You had a, a penalty shot goal scored by a defenseman. I would love to look that up. I don't think it happened. It did not. You would not have to look that up. We we would remember. Yeah. I yeah. would have tweeted it. I was so thinking many times. shootout as I said it. And I'm looking at it. It's no. just a penalty shot. Um, I would have been it would have been too lame to be like, oh, a shootout winner from a defenseman. Because that happened yeah. like multiple times. Like McAvoy and Shattenkirk in the last month did that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My specific Pardon. prediction. Did you hear mine uh, when you listened back? Uh, <laughs> I sure did. Tell the listeners, Joe. I don't know if I want to say it. It was a two-fight night from Milan Lucic. And then you expanded on that saying, well, oh, no, I think I expanded on it saying both against Ryan Reeves. So we were wrong. So we can leave it at that. Uh, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Just cross it out right, Patrick Maroon, two-fight night in the playoffs. Whoa. All right. Well, that's our predictions. That was fun. I'm glad we good. did that. I'm really proud of us. I'm, that was I'm good. glad that you went back and listened and wrote all of it down. That sounds like actually like a, a fair amount of work. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny is if you listened back to it, you must have heard me click clacking on the keys being like, hold on, let me write that down. You know, in retrospect, I probably did. Yeah. But I, I, I was click clacking myself, so I probably just thought it was me. All right. Whatever. All right. All right. Before we move on to the next thing, let's have a listen to a, an awesome deal from our good friends over at Prize Picks. Tell us about it. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on Prize Picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On Prize Picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Price picks. 
Thanks so much okay. to our good friends over at Prize Picks. Let's talk about the playoff picture. What an exciting final night of the regular season, Rob. Not just in Bruins land, but in hockey land. I was watching three games at once tonight. I was yeah, watching. And that's the right way to do it. Yeah, I, I had the Detroit Montreal game going. I had the Philly Caps game going, and of course the Bruins Senators game going. Um, I'm very disappointed Detroit did not get in. I feel like they had the most jump. Maybe I maybe I just feel like that they were the most entertaining watch over the last two days because of their their comebacks. With so they had their two goal comeback against Montreal, and then their one goal comeback against Montreal. Both win in overtime and then a shootout. And then Tortorella was like, I don't want anybody to be happy. So he pulled the goalie and the Caps scored. And then the Caps, in, in that moment, knocked out three different teams. <laughs> yeah, very so, cool. So thanks, John. Really cool move there. Go kick a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we've landed on, that he kicked the horse? I, I We don't have enough information to say he didn't. So I can say it. And I, I don't believe anybody out there could ever fully disprove me. I'm going to stand on a pedestal and say, John Tortorella, I'll kick the horse, and nobody has the ammunition to knock me off that pedestal. It's how Can science works, something? Joe. That's just how science works. Can I ask you a dumb question here that you, you may. should probably know? Yeah. Okay, so the Caps and the Red Wings, same number of points. Red Wings have more wins. They have two more uh, regulation and overtime wins. Uh, what is the tiebreaker? Uh, is so the way tiebreakers work, so it's regulation wins and then regulation and uh, overtime wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and I then see that now. Total wins, which I feel like is the same as regulation and overtime. Uh, well, no, because you got shootout wins in there, but uh, regulation wins that'll do it. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> They won more games than the Capitals. The Capitals have a minus 37 goal differential. It is That's the worst horrible. goal differential for a playoff team since 1991. It's the third worst goal differential in the whole Eastern Conference. Only the and, Habs and the Blue Jackets were worse. And they're playing the Rangers. And I feel pretty good that the Rangers are going to beat the shit out of them. It's the playoffs. Anything can happen. But the Rangers are just like probably the most complete team in the league. And the Capitals are not. But we've we've had this conversation before, and it didn't go our way. So who knows? In terms of uh, goal differential, they are twenty seventh in the league this year. It's Sorry, not good. To get that it's out not there. good. That's so funny. So uh, that's going to be a sweep. But honestly, uh, it's hockey, dude. It's hockey. If you haven't mm -hmm. been here, let me tell you, things don't always go that way. So uh, good old chance that. Uh, the, the rags just get swept by the caps for no reason because that just happens. There's just, there's no rhyme or reason to play up hockey. You, you, there's a reason you play the games. All right. You show up to play the games. The so West was I, really what I was going to say, just to keep it on the East for another second, please. Um, so Rangers capitals, and then I hurricanes Islanders, which I don't think I'm going to watch a single minute of. I really Yuck. don't think I, that is not, that is not a sexy matchup. The other two are very sexy. Bruins Leafs classic. We've discussed that. We will continue to discuss it. And then another battle for Florida with the Panthers and Lightning, which that that's, awesome. that's a great matchup to take take out the fact that they're just in the same state. That's just a very fun, exciting, fast matchup. That's awesome. That's an awesome matchup. Um, the the West is very weird again. It's also, it's been decided. It's been unsexy. But I mean, two out of three matchups. Am I doing that math right? Nope. Three out of four matchups in the East. Great. Am I still doing that math wrong? Three out of four matchups in the East are great. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you, yes. Yeah. Rangers capitals are good. I agree. Yeah. And then in the, in the West, we got Dallas, Vegas. Yep. We've got Vancouver, Nashville. Odd, 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 but intriguing. I like that. that I feel like that's a dark horse for a really good series. That could be a fun one. That's going to be the, you know what? That's top candidate for, I bet you forgot about this series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. You flip it on late and you're like, oh, yeah. Like or this series like, is tied, isn't it? It'll be like round two and you're like, who did Nashville play? Mm. Or who did Vancouver play? I, mean, yeah, I don't have favorites. Probably that one. Probably, 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 probably Vancouver, yeah. 
probably that one. Uh, and then Edmonton, LA. Uh, I mean, look, playoff Connor. I'm excited for that. I don't care who they're playing. I love that it's the Kings because it's like, yeah, just kick the shit out of the Kings. I don't, I have no respect for the Kings. Should I? Yes. Do I? No. So there you go. Simple enough. You're not going to convince me. And then my, my, my favorite here, Winnipeg, Colorado. I love that series. Do you really? I, I really do. Oh, I okay. Really do. <laughs> if that was a bit. No. Why, why, why would it be? I think that's a great series. I don't know. Uh, I, I love when you get a high end offense against like an elite goaltender. I think that yes. can be because either way that falls, it's sick. Like if he just like, mm-hmm. is like keeping them to like zero to one goals every game, or if they're just lighting them up, it's so entertaining. Either way. And you know, there's going to be games that are both ways. Like, you know, looking uh-huh. at the, yeah. like afterwards, looking back, you know, there's going to be like a six, one game. And then there's going to be like, you know, a one, nothing. A one, nothing game. Yeah. Yeah. Big. Time. So I'm very excited for that. That's going to be. An awesome one. What a what a great regular season of hockey. Just for the for honestly, the league, for yeah. the game. Can we yeah. honestly that was just what a great year. It really and some was some weird matchups to, to come out of it at the end of it. Yeah, that was a it was a very fast season. I don't know how you feel about it. That felt like a really quick season. But at the same time, if like I talk about like the time where I we were on the show and I was like, you're like, hey, Rob, tell us about the preseason. I'm like, oh, yeah, this Potter guy, he might be sticking around. That feels like it was three years ago at the same right. time. And uh, it's also weird. Like, I don't know. Now, Bergeron feels like a relic of my childhood. It does, doesn't it? Or at yeah. the very least, it doesn't feel like it was last season. Oh, man, that's kind of depressing to think about, honestly. It, is. it really is. Like, we were all pushing for Bergeron to be here. I think if he was here, I think it would feel weird. No. I think the big part is that he wasn't like super present with the team. Like he was around, but like it wasn't like he w- was there. Like he, we heard from him on a weekly basis or something. Yeah. Which good for him. Like, he, like from his interview one morning, Brew, like clearly enjoying his retirement and like, yeah, dude, you, you'd fucking earned it. Oh, speaking of earning yeah. retirements, we're safe. Oh, we'll save it. Like we gotta save it. We gotta save it. Do you it. want to talk about it now? No. What What else do we have to talk about? Well, the last two games. <laughs> no, we can talk about Jack. Oh, Jack Edwards Jack. is retiring. Everybody, Jack you know, is retiring. And it's tough. It's brutal, and it came out it's of nowhere, brutal. like two, three hours before. I think it was two hours before game eighty-two. And the last we heard from Jack outside of the booth was the uh, piece done. God, I wish I could remember who it was by. It was a great piece on Jack. Please go find it. Whoever did it did an awesome job. Um, But it was Jack being like, yeah, I know that I've lost a step, but I'm doing my best. And uh, I'm trying and I want to, you know, the moment that I feel I can't do it anymore, I'll step away. And then the next you hear is him saying, Hey, I don't think I'm able to do it anymore. I'm going to step away. Uh, and that made it extra tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it, it feels like it wasn't, it, it feels like it was taken away from him. Like it wasn't like, and you know what? Now it's my time. I just, I don't like, know. I don't know. Do you think that? Do you think that he was pushed out? By him, I well, he even said as much. He was like, "Oh, I, oh, oh, I thought you were saying like by somebody." No, 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 no. I like like that. The quote that he he had, uh, like his like a, the official quote. It was I, I, I sent it to you, but it was it, it was tough. It was like the first thing that it was like. Obviously, hearing the news, you're like, "Oh my god, that's like you're not too too surprised to hear it." But at the same time, it's like, "Wow, I really didn't want to hear that." Um. I'm I'm just I'm stalling so I can find it. I am quote I am no longer able to attain the standards I set for myself to honor the fans, the players, the Bruins organization, and Nesson with the best they all deserve. That's so sad to me. But we got and, so many years of him. Yeah, <clears throat> and I, this is maybe not the right approach, but I, I we come on here and just give our thoughts and what we notice and and all that stuff. Um. I'm glad that he has the first round because I would have been sad if this was his final one because this is a nothing shitty game where you lost to Ottawa in game 82. Yeah, I don't. 
yes, that, but I didn't even mean that. I mean, like it, Jack has up games and down games. This was a down game. He just, he just didn't have it. And like, I want, I want one more line. I need one more scream. I need one more quote. I need him announcing the Bruins, not the Leafs out. Yeah. I need, oh I need, him, I need his Nesson oh Bruins God. career to end on him saying the Bruins are advancing in the second round. I haven't even thought about how his final call might be the Bruins eliminating the Leafs. Yeah. Oh my God. It has w- to be that. It the has Leafs to be. It's, it's are one or the other. Again. It's one or the other. He yeah. either calls, you know, bees over Leafs or Leafs over bees is his final call. That's that's poetry. It's not poetry, it's just beautiful and scary. And other feelings. Many. It's a lot of things. But um, yeah, I don't know if it's like time to say goodbye. I don't want to like, maybe do that yet. I would like to do that after round one and like really take a hard look back. But I think it's yeah, worth no, it's same. I, I I don't want this to be the last we really talk about it because like I'm going to be like, yeah. all right, what's your favorite call? Or and I don't want it to just be like only what you could remember on the spot. Yeah, and even yeah. tonight he was like, and he fell like an eighty foot pine. I was like, yeah. oh, how am I going to live without hearing shit like that in a Bruins game? He's just he's always made watching the game more fun, and he's also just the voice of my childhood. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just, just he's the just... voice of the background. It's just always on. And uh, it, this is such a stupid thing, but I've been thinking about it more and more over the last few years is in Manchester by the sea of all movies. Uh, there's just a scene where the main character is watching a Bruins game. And like Jack's voice is just in the background of that movie. I and forgot I was like, about that. Yeah. Yes, and because when you were selling that movie to me, you were like, there's a cameo from someone that you're not going to expect to be in this movie. Yeah. And it was the Jack. only happy part of that movie. Yeah. The best part of the movie is just hearing the Bruins game on in the background. <laughs> that in the conversation uh, when they're at the wake and it's the most real dialogue I've ever heard in my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're yelling across. Yeah. No, get yeah. them a plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was like almost too real. It was like immersion breaking. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was like rebuilding a fourth wall. It's like, am I watching a movie? Yeah. But uh, uh, that, but, I don't know, for some reason that scene, it just, it hit on this weird level of like, that's right. Like Jack is the soundtrack to a bunch of people's lives. He's not just, you know, my personal, you know, guy in my living room. Like he's. You know, there's there's lots of folks out there who uh, have have Jack as their as their backing track. Um, you know what kind of bothered me a little bit? Everything everyone said online today. Kind of what I'm getting at, yeah. But mm-hmm. and it's the people who are like, well, I didn't like him, but best of luck. And it's like you don't need to add that on, my guy. You could just say good luck in retirement. You don't have to be like just so everybody knows. I don't like him, but or, you I know still want to come across. Uh, as be, uh, it's just so fucking sanctimonious. It's like, okay, like you didn't have to say anything if you didn't like him. Like, you know what else you could have said? What? Nothing. Correct. Uh, why? Could've, I don't could've know. Shut your fucking mouth. I just simply don't get it. I don't get uh, it. Uh, so crazy Boston's. I'll, sorry, go ahead. I keep interrupting. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I, I was just gonna say if you if you disliked Jack, I have a hard time believing that you watched the games. I, I just like, do like I got it when my like much older uncles and like my grandfather, they're like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Jack. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Like if, if you're like more old, old school, maybe not. I really but though. I like, yeah, like maybe like specifically my uncles and my grandfather, but like, yeah, I, like anybody like our age is like, I don't like Jack. I'm like, all right, well, you're a loser. Like, I'm like how this guy like loves his job more than anybody's ever loved anything. So maybe that in itself is enough. Yeah. I, it's just like you're watching an entertainment product that you are passionate about, presumably, right? Yeah. If you're tuning in, you're probably, you probably give a shit about it. Right. And the guy who's telling you about it and is there with you is the most passionate guy that there is. Why would you not enjoy that? And here's the thing, man, like people want to point to two, three, four, <laughs> five seven twelve uh instances in which he was uh you know dozen got, got a little carried away do you not get a little carried away as a fan like, also it's like was... we know he's getting carried away 
people are like yeah, yeah he's so biased i'm like it's not like he says all this stuff and then my brain just runs with it and i'm like wow he really did win that fight it's like no like i recognize he's wrong but it yeah. makes it more fun it's like not only did the Bruins play get his ass kicked, but the play-by-play guy is saying, like, wow, he's tempted to twist off his head like a bottle cap. It's like, where else are you going to hear that? Literally, what other sport and what other commentator are you going to hear that? Nowhere. So yeah. unique. Yeah. Jack's been the best, man. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll save the, the real sappy stuff for, for our actual goodbye to Jack. But uh, we love you, Jack. Big time. We still want you on this show, Jack. I will be emailing you, Jack. We will be emailing you again, Jack. <laughs> again. Yes. And uh, I mean, best of luck. Go live it up somewhere, would you oh, please? You Why, see would, what he said? Could, could Jack, what? Sorry. He says he wants to ski a hundred days out of the year. Unbelievable. I hope he does. I hope he I hope he comes back home. Come back to New Hampshire, brother. Come on back up. We'll go skiing together on me. Uh well, green circle trails, but but on me. Uh, uh, I was going to say, what could you see him doing as another job after this? Because I have, I think the best answer. I'm like thinking of like a local news station where he's just like, <laughs> not the weather. No. <gasps> okay. This is a really niche answer. Okay. And like okay. only people from New Hampshire are going to get this. Oh my God, I know what you're going to say. He's the new Fritz Weatherby. <laughs> He's the new Fritz, dude. He would be my, the new Fritz Weatherby. My answer I'll tell you is... the story tonight on New Hampshire Chronicle. Like, tell me that's not built for Jack Edwards. Doing like a, like a, yeah, like a 60 minutes equivalent for a local news station. Like about a local, what... like, beekeeper. Like... <laughs> that's, yeah, if you're not from New Hampshire, New Hampshire Chronicle has been a show that's been on the air for, I think, actually, it just hit 185 years. And it's older it's... than the United States somehow. And it's been hosted by one guy for the whole 185 and this guy he just like you said he's he'll just do a 60 minute piece on this covered bridge did you know about this i'll tell you all about it and he does and it's peaceful and calming and if you've never taken a nap to new hampshire chronicle my goodness are you missing out to wake up to fritz weatherby just telling you about the raw honey that's on sale at the corner of north conway main street my god get out of here that's that's a great answer mine wasn't very far off it was like working at either like the freedom trail or bunker hill monument or the, oh, yeah. the old north church like giving the tour. yeah 100 something with history like that dude loves history so much mm -hmm. we should have when we have him on here let's just talk american history no bruins i already know the first question i'm going to ask him and i will save it on the very small chance that we actually do get jack edwards i don't think show. it's a small chance at all okay well we on both the, met on him. the chance did you get to meet him? We both met him. Well, well, <laughs> and uh <laughs> definitely. 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 <laughs> no, I, I I I whatever he does, he's gonna do it so well, and I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Obviously, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm I I think Jack would have done this till he was 112, man, but he's I think he's earned it. I think it was one of those, you're going to have to tear the jersey off my back situations. And although I'm sure it's a little bittersweet for him, I bet on the other side of this, he'll he'll be loving life and loving screaming at his TV watching the Bruins uh, for many years to come. I'd pay no, for it. What a beautiful way. We, we, we just kind of made some fun of that. That's great. We just had a good for us. We, we're happy about it now. As I would pay for a good. Jack Edwards live stream of the second, third, fourth rounds. Oh, he doesn't even have to do a play by play. I just want to watch him watch the game. Like, I just would have it on a second screen. Imagine him Isn't swearing, it? which I've heard, and it is electric. It's like, alarming. oh my God, it, it is. It's like I heard it and my brain didn't process it for a moment. I was like, what? What? Like, you can't say that, bro. I didn't know you knew that word. <laughs> why, have you, why have I never heard you say that? You definitely should have been swearing all this stuff. What if he just like went out tonight, just drop an f bomb after f bomb? <laughs> High above the fucking ice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> D to fucking D. <laughs> oh, oh man, I I really look forward to the monologue that I'm sure he has prepared for his for his final game. So, it's gonna be good. Also, be I just want to say it's crazy that Boston lost him and Mike Gorman like two days apart. 
Dude, and the Yankees just lost um, John Sterling. John Sterling. Everybody's going. Everybody's going. We're getting old, dude. Don't you not like John Sterling? Um, he has been a great source of entertainment to me for the past couple of years. <laughs> so it is sad to see him go. <laughs> My bad. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> he, no, he has. He, he has had trouble calling the games the past couple of years, but in a very different way from Jack. It's not like he's vocally having trouble keeping up. He'll like call a home run and celebrate it and be like, another home run for John Carlos Stanton. And Stanton's like walking to the dugout and it was like a fly out to the warning track. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he'll have to correct himself. It's happened he's like five or six thinking. times. Yeah, it's happened multiple times. He's like, wait, did, he caught it. My apologies. Him and Jack really just switch spots, whatever. Do it. I or like a three way trade. Hang out. Uh, and then I had that weird run in with John Sterling in the bathroom. Uh, that's whatever. what it was. I think that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I don't want to even talk about that. But speaking of we... run ins in the bathroom, I was just going to say, what, the, what a perfect segue for you, Pat. Tell us all about it, Joe. Well, so I had you... my first game credentialed at the Garden. You're goddamn right you did. I went to, uh, it was the, the Bees Canes game uh, Tuesday, last Tuesday. Uh, a week from a week before we're recording here, and uh, it's been a little bit since we had an episode, huh? Never mind. Don't touch, if you're stealing us, don't listen to that. Um, I don't think they pay attention to us. <laughs> yeah, we're good. I think we're totally fine here. This is a safe space. This is just just you and I. If, if you're listening to this, turn it off. This is just for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not like we're recording this, but uh, yeah, it was my first game credentialed. Uh, first of all. Big shout out to Evan Marinovsky for for helping helping a brother out. Yeah. Uh, his uh, in case you don't listen to his show, Bruins Beat is the biggest Bruins show on uh, the CLNS Media Network. It's awesome. For They're now. great over there. For now, coming for you, Evan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just so happened to run into Evan as I was walking in the door, as I didn't know where I was going, as they couldn't find my credential. So it was pretty perfect timing. Um, and he showed me around, introduced me to some folks. Very nice. So thank you to Evan for that. Um, my first impressions, first of all, if you don't know where you're going in there, you're never gonna you're never gonna it's crazy. You're never oh, gonna find it. <laughs> it's like actually alarming how difficult it is to find your way around there. You have to go through two levels of security, go yeah. to like a certain elevator, but only one of them. And like I was like, dude, this isn't this you this shouldn't be how this is. It's insane. The elevators um, are surrounded by trash cans, and you're like, is this right? And you're like, Yeah, this is the one that goes to the press box. You're like, okay. All right. And uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful. It's very weird to explain because like if you haven't been there, you probably have no image of it, which I I didn't. I had no image of what it looked like, Um, but beautiful up there. Very cool. Um, People were all very nice and whatever. Um, The uh, the element that I forgot about in the press box is that players hang out up there like injured players. Hang out up there. Forgot that. Remembered it when I was in the bathroom and a big old fella bumped into me as he was coming into the bathroom. And I was like, who's wearing a full suit and a winter hat? That's Pat Maroon. It's Pat Maroon. Um, Big fella. Big fella. That's about all I got. That's about all I got on Pat Maroon. But um, stunned me. And I did like a very like, uh, maybe not unprofessional, but like a very like you obvious. He obviously had a moment with me where I was like, Go. He could tell, it, yeah, that I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't point you. at him, but I might as well have. <laughs> what? You're still what pulling you? up your pants. <laughs> what are you doing here? The other thing I'll say, I don't know how much people care about this stuff, but I don't know. It's our show. We talk. Uh, Just for you and I. It's very, very uh, strict versus Fenway. Very, very strict. Yeah. In terms of like, you come down the elevator with us, and then we will lead you there. We will tell you who's available. They will come out one at a time. You get two minutes with them. Then, hey, next guy, get out. You talk to them. Then you go back to your little fucking room. We put you in, and you sit there. Uh, And that's not how it's done at Fenway at all. It's very much like, yeah, it's open. Come on down. Whatever. We're hanging out here. Come talk to us. Our dicks are out. (laughs) And it's it's so different. 
it was so because before i ever went in there like you I, I obviously was like picking your brain i'm like what is it like to be in a locker room and you're telling me all these things and then i went to my first game and i told you and you're like that's so weird like everything i was telling you you're like that's not at all my experience i figured that was how all sports did it i don't even know if that's I, how I all did baseball too. Teams did. i didn't know it would be so strict and you talking about how like they'll bring out one at a time what's even weirder is that they start staggering them so everybody will be they'll yeah. will be huddled around the first player and then like a minute in and they'll be like in my experience it was like tyler bertuzzi is available for comments and then like half the people move over to him and by move i mean run over like aggressively and then mm-hmm. it's, i think it's like three maybe four players they end up bringing out and when you're up there they like someone comes up to you and they're like who do you want to talk to mm-hmm. and i was like but bergeron <laughs> and like the guy who asked and then the, like the clear veteran writer right next to him they kind of had a moment they're like they i think they looked at each other and laughed in a way like yeah man like bergeron scored and it's bergeron and he's the captain like yeah he's gonna you don't need to ask for Bergeron to be available, like he's going to be available. You know, yeah. I, I I'm like, glad I, I was warned him. about that, not by you, but somebody else warned me. They were like, "Just so you know, someone will come up to you and ask you who you want to talk to, and don't act like that's an insane question." And I was like, "Okay, that's that is good to know." Um, but nobody had any kind of answer. Everyone was like, nah, "I don't know," and it was like Freddie Sway and, <laughs> and shock. Yeah, everyone was like, "I don't know." It was a it was a dog shit Chris game. Kelly, and everybody kind of said that. That was the thing. Um, and that's kind of been the tone about all of these games here at the end that is like, yeah, whatever. You know, we're, we're they're they're looking forward to the playoffs. They're waiting to see who their opponent's going to be. And like, that's more or less it. So the fact that their approach to this all has been like, yeah, you know what? It's hockey. And once we're in the playoffs, like things are a little different. And right now we're just trying to play our game. I was happy to hear that. And I know that that's all just the PR mumbo jumbo, but I don't know. It meant something to me. Is that crazy? No, it's a really unique experience. It's it's I don't know what it was like for you because you've been a member of press for so long now. Mm. Um, but when I was there, I, 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 I rightfully had imposter syndrome. And I'm like, I'm a fan oh, that they haven't caught on yet, that they let me in. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. just, when I was in the locker room, I felt like a fan that was like, I felt like a make a wish kid. They're like, yeah, just stand here and don't talk. Just take it all in. I was like, okay. Garnet Hathaway tapped me on the arm and I did a hundred push ups that night. And he's Stephen King to me. But I was, I was more like, I don't look like these other guys because it's a lot of older guys. It is. And then, like, honestly, thank God Ty Anderson exists or I would have stuck out like a sore fucking thumb. He was the only guy who looked like chill. He's the only guy that isn't dressed like he was had to attend a funeral right afterwards. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Right now, I have a hat on. So if you're watching this on YouTube because this episode's on YouTube. First one, it's actually I should have dressed up. This is what I look like. Yeah, that's right. So sorry. So uh, but I mean, my hair looks terrible and my, I have that lo- I have long, shaggy, terrible hair that I'm not happy with that. I'm going to shave, hat. which I'm also not happy about, but that's neither here nor there, Joe. But I was like, I don't look like a, a professional. That was all I was really thinking um, is that I don't look like a professional right now, but no, I mean, it's, um, it's a little stiff in there, but yeah, is what it is, is what it is. I, uh, I very much enjoy uh, doing it. I want to do it more. Uh, I appreciate the Bruins allowing us in there. Big time. And I'd like to go back for the playoffs and get some bear with me content. Maybe while, while we're around. Be very good. Uh, yeah. Speaking of playoffs. Yeah. Uh, tentatively, game one is scheduled for Saturday at 8 p.m. So we got the primetime slot. 5 p.m. is Lightning Panthers. And they are on... Can you just tell me what channel you think this game is going to be on? Both of these games will be on. ESPN. Wrong. TBS. I was going to say TBS or TNT. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know this was postseason baseball. When did TBS start coming? Well, TNT and TBS are the same. It's Turner. They just. I've turned abroad. Yeah. Turner. Yeah. Turner Network Television or. yeah, Turner Network Television and Turner Broadcasting System. I think. As I, I hear you typing, I quickly I, I walk back. Try Nitro Toline. 
that's the other one. That's the other one. That's the other one. That's, that's the, the ACDC TNT. Correct. That's a lot of initials there. I never thought about how many letters are in that that song title. <laughs> so many letters. TNT by ACDC. Write something out for God's sake. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh man, I'm excited though. Bruins lease. Like what can, what more can you say? I mean, so yeah. I in my hockey fandom, which again only spans just over a decade now, um I've seen three Bruins Leafs playoff series and they were great because the Bruins won all three in seven games. And one of them was it it, it cemented my Bruins fandom forever was the 2013 game 7 comeback. But I, I there's so much going on here and like we we can probably do a more proper preview coming up i think we um, will probably friday that's perfect a little, that's a that little handbook great. to go with game one i would say i think that's perfect um but i i there's i feel like there's a lot going on here like recent bad blood um you got enough like guys like mccabe and domi and then we got our own guys like freddie and El maroon i'm very excited to see maroon oh that's not that's another thing i want to talk about real quick is uh, our impressions of patrick maroon's first first two games with the team yeah, that oh, was my last note. Is, okay. uh, is is Pat Maroon's here? Pat Maroon's playing hockey with the bees. Uh, he's out there. Your thoughts? I'm gonna move the goalpost because I know I said I didn't want to say anything until I actually get to see him play. But I'm moving it to I don't want to say anything until I see him play a playoff game, aka a game where I think he's actually trying. Because I from his first game. The only thing that really stuck out to me is how slow he is. Effective was the word Monty used, and I do like that word because he he was that. But it was like a lot. I don't think I've ever seen somebody skate the way he does. He looks like he's stomping with every push. It looks more like he's like he's not pushing. He's just walking forward. Um, yeah, but again, does. it's it's it, it's it was game eighty and eighty one, and it was a conditioning game. And they're like, yeah, you can sit out 82. Just we, they brought him here for the playoffs. They they did not bring him here to win the last three games of the season. So until I see him in a game that really matters Saturday, I, I, I don't really want to give my like full, this is really how I think about him. But that was my like first impression. But I think he had a couple great chances. He like kicked that puck to Boquas and had a few really good shots on goal. He was strong on the boards. Honestly, seeing him just makes me miss Brazo even more. I know it, but like the thing, I'm not looking for him to contribute offensively really at all. I just want to see him in the corners. I just want to see him after the whistle. I don't know. I know that that's a bloodthirsty approach to this, but that's what I want. I just want to see him be Pat Maroon. I don't care if he has a point in the postseason. I just don't like just want him to be a presence. I want him like, to staple somebody against the boards in yeah. game one early. And because he that's, hasn't even he hasn't even played at the Garden yet. That's true. Because both his games are away games, and he didn't play tonight. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited for it, but I mean, there's been nothing that he's done on the ice in his two games that like made me excited. It's more like it, that felt like getting him up to speed. I felt like he was playing a preseason game, and everybody yeah, else was playing just, a regular season game, which is fine. Like exactly. I'm not like, oh, that that's, that's the effort you're bringing. I'm like, yeah, no, like it's not the game to judge his play on. It just isn't. Like he was there because he hasn't skated in a game in like two months, if not longer, probably longer. He's getting up to speed and it's, yeah. I'm not, I'm not worried about him or anything. Just, we know he's going to, to the bathroom. We know that he does. This is, yeah. this is why you listen to us guys. Listen, this is you, guys want the inside track. Scoop? you want the inside scoop? You guys, you ready? This motherfucker washes his hands. Oh shit. No, I shit. swear to God, bro. I swear to God. I heard him scrubbing. Uh, I think I might've heard him singing happy birthday twice he wants some clean this guy's a, a doctor a covid boy mm. learned his lesson mm -hmm. i really wanted to be i told a couple of people i was like oh yeah joe ran him in the bathroom and everybody was just like oh did they poop together like <laughs> it was like basically like they want to know if you played battle shits like i, mean, no, I don't no think joe could win that game i don't think joe could win that game no it was more of a it was more of a a, a sink to door interaction so more of a what interaction a sink to door interaction. Did, was there any eye contact? That's what I wanted. Yeah, know. yeah, for a moment, for a moment. That's it. Exciting stuff here, folks. I, I mean, yeah, for a second, because there was like a oh, oh. You're were you, were you like opening the door to leave, and he was opening it to go in? That's what I'm imagining. 
it was like I was coming out of the stall and he was walking from the urinal to the to the uh, sink. We kind of oh, so you wash your hands together. That's what you're saying. Wash our hands together. That's adorable. Stop. You should have been like, you know, I have a podcast. You know, I got, I'm not I got, inviting you on. I just want you to know that. I want you to know I got some dirty hands right now, Pat. <laughs> Can you please help me get Jack Edwards on the podcast? <laughs> Pat, I got some dirty, dirty hands and a need for Jack Edwards. I haven't this. forgiven you for 2019. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Jack, right? <laughs> you should. You should. You should. <laughs> pretended like you were the guy there and you're like oh you're a new face i was like i'm joe it's good to meet you you know around here like just like good. help ease him into the ease him into yeah. the club a little bit yeah don't, don't worry man no you'll kidding. get the hang of it around no, no here kidding. not played yet oh you'll get your chance don't worry about it you'll, you'll get in there one day see if we hey, can't get you a cup sport. see if we can't get you a cup <laughs> i already won three. let me talk oh, to some people you, see buddy. if we can get you some playing time huh if you mean <laughs> that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> I'm excited to see playoff Pat. I very much am. I am too. I am too. Also, really quick, uh, um, did you notice how like, dejected the team looked after that loss tonight? Yeah, they well, yes, because they I looked think they hurt. Yeah, well, they sat there for a bit, uh, on the bench just after, which I don't, you don't really see them do. No, that's like, uh, we didn't make the playoffs sitting on the bench kind of move, which we've seen back to back years. 15, 16. Hmm. Tough. One of them was when we lost to Ottawa in the last game of the season. Huh. Hmm. Are you worried about Carlo at all, too? Um, I don't know if I should be, is the thing. The the precedent some people are quoting. So, well, first of all, so Carlo blocked a shot against uh who did they, who did they just capitals? The cap of course it's Washington. Uh, and he did not return. And then when questioned about it, Montgomery just said he was had today off for just a maintenance day, and he, but he'll be ready for game one on Saturday. I'm fine taking that at face value. I don't, doesn't raise any flags for me. But some people were like, that's what he said about Bergeron last year. And he wasn't. And I'm like, all right, well, that Bergeron like broke his back and like Carlo blocked a shot, which not to say couldn't be more serious, but I, I I'm I was a little worried, but like I I'm I think he'll be ready for game one. I really wanted Prezzo back by now. I know. But again, I mean the whole conversation was like, how do you fit Brezzo and Maroon into this lineup? And like they it well, they answered it for us. You don't. No. So there you go. Problem crisis averted. We did it. Um, <clears throat> that was all the notes I had. Um, oh, also, oh, that we should do this. How about this? How about this? Those games, they were, they were ugly. Those games were ugly. Yeah, the they weren't good. We yeah, they just, they weren't even talking about. Yeah. yeah, they haven't looked great, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's in the same way that I'm not judging Maroon's play. I'm not going to judge the whole team's play because these games are like, all right, just play okay and just don't get hurt and just be ready for game one. Yeah, the, I mean... The, the team seems to be in that same way. They're they're messing with the power play line. The power play seems to be at least trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, I mean, Monty fine. shook it up pretty aggressively, which I think yeah. it, it seemed to work for them, which I like. But I feel good. I feel very good at going into game one right now. As do I. Womp womp. Do you have any closing thoughts? Any uh, anything? Uh... Winner gets Bertuzzi. Well, oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Maple Leafs have uh, a new goal song. That's the buzz I'm hearing. For real? Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? Can't tell you. Okay. Save it. Save it. I will. I'll tell you off air. And until then, uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Follow us on the socials at Bear With Me underscore Pod on Twitter. We don't have an Instagram. Follow uh, follow CLNS Media, uh, and follow uh, the Bruins on CLNS too uh, on uh, Twitter. And uh, thank you to Prize Picks. Use code CLNS on Prize Picks. Big thank you to them. 
Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Make sure to head over there if you haven't. Links all over our Twitter. We will see you before game one of Bruins Leafs. Best time and of the year, baby. It's back. Thank thanks you for, for bearing with me. Cheese. Rats like cheese. You got it. That's all I got. <laughs>